Hello, everyone. So thanks for joining and uh, thanks for joining our webinar. Secondly, yes, and welcome to Sparda's masterclass, where we are today going to talk about how to accelerate your music learning by, by, by 2x is what we are saying. Uh, the masterclass will include topics like why is practice important? How to create an effective <clears throat> practice plan? And how do you measure your musical growth and stay inspired? And we are also going to talk about the golden 30 minute workout tune followed by a QA. So, moving forward, I would like to share a screen and begin this webinar. Yeah, please, please do let me know if you can see the screen, guys, everyone. Can I get that thumbs up or, or... Yes, so we do can see the screen. And I'll share it again. Okay, so welcome to Sparda School of Music. And today's topic, we're going to study, we're going to learn or discuss about how do we accelerate our music learning by 2x growth. And Sparda is a futuristic platform for online music learning. <clears throat> okay, so the first question uh, that I would want to address or see is why are some music students great, right? why are some of them good and why are some of them average right we have different kinds of students some are some really pick up music really fast some are slow learners some are average learners right so let's let's try to find out what are the reasons involved in this so the first and the foremost most important thing is a student's interest and motivation to learn music right uh, that's the primary factor. If if you have if you are motivated enough and you have good interest to learn music, uh, your music journey will be really good, and it will probably be a little easier because you are doing it by yourself, right? You don't need any kind of external push by someone. Second thing is the environment you are in, right? How supportive uh, your parents are, your teachers are. How what kind of teacher you get is also very important, right? Uh, because music learning involves two parties. It involves the teachers and it involves the students as well, right? Where the teacher is delivering some kind of topic and student is absorbing that knowledge. And a parent's role is also very important in, in the student's music learning. So this is where I'm talking about the external factor. So in, interest and motivation is, is more of an intern, internal factor and environment is an external factor. Okay. But, but the main reason I think apart from these two things is practice. And this is something which we can measure and also see where we are heading with this, right? Environment is not in our hand. Sometimes interest and motivation is not. So if you ask me, uh, I didn't have a lot of interest and motivation when I first started off learning music when I was 14 years old or something. I, I was just put into a music class because music has a lot of benefits and it helps you as a person. But over a period of time, because the one thing I was good at, I was as good at practice and consistent practice, right? Just practice is not important. Consistent practice is key to where you head with your music journey or which direction you take. And uh, so if I want to give you an example, instead of practicing three hours in a week, that could be just on weekends. I would briefly practice 30 minutes every day, right? So the consistency is what we are going to talk about today. So let's focus on practice, right? And, and how it benefits your journey, right? 
So uh, why is practice important, right? This is the next question. Why why do we do you really need practice? So let's let's start, try to have a case study of great athletes. Um, I couldn't find videos, English videos, probably I could say uh, where musicians are talking about practice in general. But yeah, athletes and musicians are of the same kind. We we both work on our muscles. Athletes work on their full body and musicians are working on their fingers, right? This is also a part of a journey. Okay, so let's look at the first video on the left. Uh, and this athlete is Kobe Bryant. Uh, he's probably one of the world's best players in basketball. And he's also recognized from what we call as Mamba mentality. All ages. Yeah, but it's, it's simple. Like if you do the math on this, right? Like if, you, if you're thinking about how often kids are playing. Mm -hmm. Right. And I tell this to my to my daughter and my daughter's team as well that I coach. So it's the simple thing of math. If you want to be a great player, if you play every single day, two, three hours, every single day, or course of a year, how much better are you getting? Most kids will play maybe, you know, an hour and a half, two days a week. Right. Put the math on it. It's not, it's, not going, it's not going to get it done. It's not going to get it done. Right. So if you're obsessive, obsessive, obsessively training, two, three hours every single day over a year, over two years. They're going to accelerate. You make quantum leaps, man. Just doing a summer camp for two weeks, you, you see a difference. I remember playing basketball. You, you, you see like, it. You get a lot better. You yes. come back more confident playing on the playground with guys who yeah. used to beat you. Yeah. And I, and like I, I tell the parents with my team, I said, it's, it's when I say your kids are going to become great basketball players. And they're like, really? Like, yeah, it's not. There's no it's math. It's it. Show up every single day. Show Right. So, so we hear Kobe Bryant, who is a five-time uh, NBA champion and he's a three-time Olympic gold medalist. He's talking about practice, right? And why it's important to do it every day, right? And it's, 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 it's a very simple phenomenon of mathematics, right? Where the kind of quantum leap he talks about by doing it every day and having consistent practice versus someone who is not doing it. After a couple of months, you will definitely see the difference if you make sure that you're doing it every day, right? Uh, there's one more video I would want to show. Again, it has athletes. For many times I was laughed at and not believed him, but it was still a kid with a dream and a belief in himself. I still have room to improve. I still set the goals for myself to strive for. Uh, I'm never complacent with what I've achieved. We have money, we have everything, we have fame. But the most important thing is the family. Keep your family healthy, good, and take care of your family because this is the most important thing in the world. Failing to prepare was preparing to fail. The night before a game, I ate the same food. I went to bed at the same time. I got up, I ate the same breakfast. Some people call it superstition, but it's a routine. I went on the courts with just a ball and a racket and a hole. Because you might be actually not feeling great physically or mentally, you're drained, but the confidence somehow gets you through. Mm. And when you don't have
mountain. You have to fail in order to climb the ladder. You are fighting the greatest fight of all time. And I fought because I knew it was not doing to be a losing fight. It couldn't be a losing fight. As long as you believe in what you're doing and you're doing things you love to do, then you can go out there and be the best at it. And that's, uh, that should give you a lot of enjoyment and fulfillment in your life. Always keep an open mind that there is something out there for each and every one of you. And it's up to you to go out there and find your niche. You learn uh, just to stick with it. I mean, there's lots of days where you don't really feel like doing it or you don't feel like grinding it out. And, and uh, you got to do it. You know, those are the highs and lows of being an athlete. And, and uh, if you want to you feel those highs, uh, you got to go through those lows every now and then. This time when you run and you just want to stop, you just want to give up like the, the hell with this. I just want to go home. The day where you get up and you know what, you have a training today. You know, it's going to be intense and you're like, oh, I don't want to go into that, but you got to go. When you play sports and you're committed to something, the commitment, the responsibility of showing up to practice on time, to being there for your teammates, um, to listening to your coaches, it's a responsibility that you have when you're playing with a, a group that you have to hold your hand in the bargain. But it's, it's simple. Like if you, you have to hit the shot, right? like hit the shot. If you're thinking about how you long, just sort of like drop into another zone. Right. I tell this to my daughter, everything. my daughter's team as well that I coach. So it's, it's simple. For many times, I was a lot. Right, guys. So I, I showed you two videos. One was talking about practice, and the right video was talking about it was taking care of the motivation and interest, right? Which we already talked about. So in the right video, you saw a lot of good athletes probably the best athletes and they talked about a few things which I would want to point out. One is the routine, right? Second thing is showing up to practice, right? But even if, even if you're feeling low, you show practice and you do your work, right? And third thing is, is not caring about what you're doing with it, right? And then because if, if you care a lot about where you are or what you're doing, you'll kind of get demotivated, but it's, it's more of an everyday routine. And fourth thing is, to have a definite goal, which one of the athletes also said, to have a definite goal in the process. Okay, so moving ahead, uh, let's talk about importance of routine, right? So why routine is important? So like as athletes, uh, musicians also have to deal with muscle memory, right? Music is all about muscle memory and movement and ergonomics is basically movement only. And so that's why routine is very important and there's an effect of consistent practice if i want to show you on to the diagram on the right right so what it means of consistent practice right uh, if you if you look on the right hand side the effects of small habits compound over time for example if you get just if you get better just 1% every day you'll end up with the results which are nearly 37 times better than one year right so this is what is very important right now consistent practice and i would want to give you an example as well by sharing one of my uh, whiteboards right So let's, I want to give you an analogy of what practice can do. So just consider that there's a slope, yeah? Right. And there is this big round rock, which you need to take it to the top of the slope, right? Maybe there's this hill is there. And consider you have to push it every day, right? And, and you cannot stop till you reach at the top, right? So what consistent practice means is that consider on day one, you cover this much, right? This is one, day one, right? And day two, you cover this much. Got it. So if you don't practice day three, what happens is basically you're not pushing it. So the ball is basically going to come, the rock is again going to come down, right? And you, you are basically going back by one step the day you don't practice. 
and and that's the journey your muscles forget what you have to do uh, they become a little more stiff because we are dealing with the we are dealing with ergonomics and muscle memory right and and music for the first couple of years is just about repetitions and movement right and consistent practice it does not involve anything else so just make sure that whenever you are not practicing or uh, whenever you are taking breaks you have to have in your mind that you're probably going back by one step right and that's why consistent practice is involved so you basically you're basically covering the path you already covered the next day right so it's it's extra work which you have to do the next day if you don't if you take a break or if you're not practicing so this is the an analogy which i want to give now moving ahead to our screen right so and and the thing with consistent practice is that you might get bored with your routine but you have to make up your mind of of doing it every day right and then let's let's also go through a video uh, <laughs> right so this is the th thirsty crow story which i think so probably everyone has heard. Search of water, but he did not get water. He was going to die for want of water. Oh! Oh my God! I am feeling so thirsty. At last, he saw a picture. He at once. Flew to it with great delight. The water was so low that the crow could not drink it. Then the crow tried to break the pitcher, but he could not. He tried again and again to overturn the pitcher, but he failed. But there was very little water at the bottom of the pitcher. He looked around and saw some pebbles lying nearby. He took the pebbles one by one and dropped them into the pitcher. The water reached the neck of the pitcher. The crow drank water to his heart's content and flew away. The moral of the story is: where there is a will, there is right. So. The, the model definitely they say where there's a will there's a way but earlier if you if you see consider that you wanted to drink water you're the crow and you took a break for a day or two right you didn't put the pebbles in the pot so you will be basically waiting for a couple of days more to get the water right because you're not working and there's no consistency involved so if if the crow because of his consistent attitude was able to drink water so that's very important my kids right so now the next question a lot of students ask me is is what to practice like what do we really practice like and how do we set the schedule and what to do so uh, before even thinking about what exercises or or what techniques or what songs you need to practice the first question you need to ask like why do you really need to practice or why are you playing music right you need to ask why do you want to do this right and the the answer could be oh i want to play like this guitar player or oh, i want to play maybe like this musician i want to play maybe you want to perform like the favorite songs of your bands that could also be so that's where you first answer your why then you ask how do you do it basically how is by taking care of this is where you can ask your teachers help as well and what to practice right 
So going ahead, uh, I would want to say that these three questions everyone should think about that why do you really need to what why do you want to do music? How do you want to do it to reach it? And what do you need to do? Right. So first thing is that you take your help of your teacher. Create master goals. You could have a master goal. Okay, that I would want to play this song by Coldplay. Maybe take any one song from your favorite band or anyone. So first thing is you have a goal that, okay, you want to play this song by a band or you want to play a couple of songs from this band, right? Then draft your medium term goals, then create your short term goals and then create your everyday routine. So go from your master goals to medium term goals to short term goals and everyday routine or steps. So let's watch a few examples. Right. So why setting goals is important, right? The first thing is that without setting goals and coming up with a plan for how you will improve, you're walking into your practice sessions with the handicap, right? So having a definite goal is very important else your energies are very split up, it's spread, and it's very tough to practice. So studies have shown that those who not only set goals, but write them as well, are far more likely to succeed than those who don't, right? So I hope everyone has a guitar book or has a music book with you, a drum book, a piano book, a singing book, right? So always maintain notes and always write your goals. Like, what do you want to do? Oh, you want to sing a song by Taylor Swift? You want to sing a song by... Uh, you want to play a song, maybe a Metallica, right? So, so if if I want to talk about master goals, medium term goals, short term goals, and everyday routine, look at the chart on the right hand side, right? So, this is where just a second. Right. So obviously, this is the master goal, which was set an example, right? I want to have no technical limitations on my instrument. Fair enough, right? So that is the master goal. Then after that, you come. Yeah. Then you come to basically that I want to be able to play eight notes comfortably over up tempos. Work playing at Cherry OK at 250 BPM this month. And the last one could, is basically what you do every day, right? To reach to that goal, right? If you want to come out with an album, right? This is a master goal that you want to come out with an album. So for that, you need to compose eight new original pieces. Write one composition every month. Spend one to two hours a week working on ideas, right? So this is how basically you set up your goals as well, right? You start from your top goal, set up your master goals of what songs you want to play or what kind of music do you want to play, right? And then you start breaking them down and, and breaking them down to that level that every day, what do you need to do to reach to your goals, right? One more example, I want to be able to play incredible jazz language, right? So I want to be a great jazz guitar player, right? So what do I need to do to become a great jazz player? Maybe I need to learn these six songs, right? To become a good guitar, jazz guitar player. So I write, write the six songs which I need to learn and the solos from the song, right? For that, I will play a jazz solo every month, right? I need to cover one jazz solo, or one jazz song every month. So it's a six month process, right? Six songs, one song every month. And to cover one jazz solo every month, I need to learn at least 24 to 32 bars a week, right? 24 bars, that could be probably be around five minutes of music or maybe three minutes of music. Every week you need to learn it. And four to eight bars a day. So you see from a very top level view, we started distributing and came to a point where what do we need to do every day to learn it? So every day I need to learn at least four to eight bars of new music. And then I'll be able to cover a jazz song in a month, right? So this is how you need to break break it up, right? So uh, I think so there are a few people, uh, there are a few participants. I would want any one of the participants to basically tell me what do they want to uh, achieve. Maybe talk about your master goal and we'll help 
you guys to come out with a plan like everyday plan yeah anyone anyone wants to participate nupur okay so tosif can you let nupur speak or or unmute yeah nupur yes, go hi ahead. hi aditya so for me um, knowing the swar uh, has been my challenge i've learned sitar for a couple of years but i can never identify if i'm going like uh, one whole scale up or down nothing at all so my goal is to even just be knowing okay what swar am i singing at so the ear training is my master goal ah uh, okay i i get to let me just clear this section can you see my screen yes i do uh huh so okay so nupur's uh, master goal is ear training right yes okay so this is your master goal and then let's talk how do we come up with with the next goal right so if mm -hmm. you if you want to do if i want to speak about okay that nupur wants to get good at ear training so uh, nupur i would want to understand are you learning uh, vocals or classic music which course are you enrolled in sparda Vo vocals vocals in vocal hindustani yes uh huh yes uh huh okay. and 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 what uh, how much time have you been learning in sparda and and what level are you at currently so i am a beginner five weeks but i am noticing that uh, i just don't know where to start what to even practice on a daily basis uh, i've okay. been asked to just sing just sing but i don't know just sing songs do what, i i think i just need the breaking down of the uh, goals like you were oh, saying the short team. term goals yes yes yeah. what should i practice every day okay so so th that that's a very good question so you want to do ear training and for that like you actually need to sing as well so i would mm -hmm. say the first thing is uh, that you spend 5 uh, minutes of your time uh, in warm up mm -hmm. right mm. uh, just warm your uh, vocal cords up so that you are able to sing uh, i hope you have done some alankar practice no we just started actually like i said five weeks he's given me the alankars but i don't know what to do with those just kind of wrote reading them uh, what do no. i do with them that's so. right so so you spend 5 minutes 5 to 10 minutes every day on your alankar practice i would say or basically alankar practice means singing the scale hmm. right so uh, okay. it's basically are ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga re sa right i am not a great singer but this is the scale right it's it's the major scale or it's it's also bilawal right uh, where you are just singing the sargam so this is one thing where you need to do the first thing is where first you warm up you bring some stability in your voice right and do the mm -hmm. alankar practice then alankar practice has a various permutation and combination i suppose right Uh, yes group of like sa re ga re ga ma ga ma ga ma pa ma pa da so it doesn't right. really matter if i'm like completely off key or doesn't matter i just practice no, no. alankar you know no, you have to be on the in the key itself so i uh, what scale do you sing in i suppose you sing in g sharp or g a or something that's what i've been just what i've been told but i have no idea <laughs> right so so as i said like singing the scale the first thing you need to know is how to catch the sa so that's where i am lost completely yeah. i don't know how to catch the sa so how to catch so this is the root note right this is where all music begins from yes. is is catching the sa right so if i want yes. to give you an example like a very brief example uh, is catching the sa it requires you to adjust your vocal cord so your vocal cords are basically contracting or expanding right that's the only two movement available for you right yes. from the vocal cord so you need to know where is the resonance right so whenever you hit the sa you you'll feel a resonance in your throat as well so if i want to give in very small demonstration um mm -hmm. just give me a second i'm putting the tanpura on my phone so that i can just you can hear the tanpura not yet No. 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 Thirty is the tone. 
I, I just heard something like for a split second. Can you hear me, sir? No, no. No, I don't know. But anyway, so uh -huh. what was you just listen to the Tantra every day, and this is the A scale which I have put. So uh -huh. okay, so I so I did try playing the Tantra on YouTube in G sharp. But then it, yeah. uh, matching with that resonance is where maybe I should uh, set my goal for the next class to where I just make the sa, uh, sa sound to match the Tanpura and have the teacher tell me if I'm matching it or I'm off. Yeah. So the first thing you need to do is, is learn how to catch Sa. Like before even ear training and, yeah. and to recognize where notes are, you need to first figure out yeah. to catch Sa. Once you catch Sa, your all other notes will come into place, right? Oh. Because sa is your root point from so sa re sa ga sa ma sa pa sa ta sa ni sa sa. So you see, from sa to re to sa yeah. to ga. yeah. You see, I can jump. Yeah. That that means I recognize how much jump do I need to put right on my on my yes. vocal cord to reach it. So so uh, I would really ask you in your warm up. Just focus on uh, catching the star. And maybe uh, this is what I used to do is I used to listen to uh, a lot of compositions throughout the day or even the Tanpura. Even when yeah. you're working or, or cooking or anything, just put the Tanpura beside it and just listen to it. Over a period of time, your ears will get used to it. And then you'll start picking okay. up, right? So uh, okay. I just feel like hitting the star or catching the star, mm -hmm. you don't need to yeah. sit like half an hour and just focus on doing it. Sometimes you might mm -hmm. just get it by you're working or doing something else. Right? Maybe mm -hmm. uh, um, so maybe just put your keep listening to the Tanpura every day. Right? And just try to hit it here, here and then. You don't need to just give half an hour of slot in this particular period of time and then do it. Right? This particular practice okay. when just about catching, sa, just put it anytime. Just try catching it. Right? On a daily basis. Okay. But yeah. Have a 20 okay. minute schedule as well where you're working on it. Once you are able to catch Sa, then start with your the scale, the RO and Avraho, right? Mm -hmm. And then you okay. go for cars. So I would say 10 minutes a day, just focus on hitting the Sa. I think so that's the most important thing for any musician once because that's the foundation, right? Once you know how to hit the Sa, every note, okay. every note just opens up. So you don't need to worry about how do I catch notes and how do I figure out. Uh -huh. Uh, maybe so what i think is for every student i would say uh, this is something i would want to write as well uh, in, mm -hmm. in 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 color is uh, is to give yourself uh, short goals always work on short goals don't give mm -hmm. yourself very big goals of of doing something because mm -hmm. what happens is that after a couple of days you get demotivated because you feel oh, you're not reaching there but, but the journey is a little long, right? And that yeah. kind of gratification is not there. So give yourself a short goal. So every week, so Nupur, I could say to you that this week, you just focus on hitting the SAP. Nothing else. Just one task okay. a day. Just one task yeah. a day you need to cover, right? And if you, hmm. if you just think about it, for six months, there are around 25 weeks, right? In six months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you just give yourself one task every week, by the end of six months, mm -hmm. you will know 25 things. You see? Yeah, this, you know, this is what I needed. Just breaking it yeah. down for me because yeah. I was lost. Like, what do I even practice if I'm so off? Uh, okay, thank you. Correct. So as I said, like, give yourself short goals, and and you can just brainstorm and help take your teacher's help as well, and mm. uh, yes, and think yes. about it. So as I said, uh, uh, mm. are, you, are you working? Are you a student? Or or how's it like? I, <laughs> I'm a professional. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a okay. professional. Yeah. So, right. So now, so I think so for professionals, the best thing is to give yourself short goals. Else what happens if you give yourself five things, it becomes really hmm. heavy right? to take care of it and to do everything at once. 
So yes. give yourself short goals and just practice one thing every day for a week. So mm-hmm. today is Saturday, right? And uh, so I'll mm-hmm. tell you by next Saturday, you just work on one thing, which is catching the sun. Okay. Right? Okay, got it. Just, got it. Kanpura, whenever you're free, just listen to it. Put on the earphones, listen to it, start mm-hmm. uh, uh, spending. So the, the idea is just to spend time with it, right? And and you'll get yes. familiarize yourself with that scale, right? With that sound. Once and mm-hmm. and you don't need to press yourself a lot. Uh, it it ha- it needs to happen in the flow as well. So give yourself space to do mistakes as well, but keep trying, sure. right? It's a repetitive Good. process, right? Music is all about repetition, if I if I have to say, and it's just about mm-hmm. repeating one single thing for for maybe hundred times till you are able to get it. Mm-hmm. So give you mm-hmm. give yourself very short goals. Uh, work on one thing every day it could be working on one scale so guys whoever is is uh whoever are the musicians or students right piano keyboard mm-hmm. guitar just practice one thing in 10 15 minutes or maybe practice two things at the most i would say in 20 minutes for mm-hmm. for, for mm-hmm. Your, uh, first 10 minutes do one thing and second 10 minutes do one thing that's it don't load y- yourself up with a lot of things uh, uh, if I want to talk about uh, students who are reading sheet music and learning uh, guitar or keyboard or such things, maybe just practice four to six bars every day. Four bars every day, just practice that particular thing, right? You don't need to practice the whole song. Every day, do four bars, right? For two days, do four bars. Next two days, do the next two bar, four bars. So give yourself short goals. Get good at small things first, right? And And as I said, over a period of three months, you'll be good at 15 things, right? Or 10 things. But yes, you have to you have to work every day, one week, one goal, right? One short goal for every week. And you will see how it helps you a lot. Yeah. Nupur, I'm, was that good enough? I hope I have resolved your issue. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, any other Thanks, student? Yeah. yeah. All good. Yeah, anyone, any doubt, any anything you would want to talk about? How do you want to share your practice or what do you want to do with your practice session? Anyone? Okay. Okay, so let's let's move ahead. And I have one more slide to take care of. And this is an important one as well, right? So next question, I think so Nupur and everyone would also have is, how much time do you do do does one student has to practice right how much time to practice and when do we practice because we are busy with work and we are working and we are students we are in schools so i get these two questions a lot how much time to practice and when to practice right so uh, i'll give you two three tips and 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 strategies or or maybe solutions to this and maybe you can think and figure out for yourself when do you have to do it Sharing the whiteboard again, clearing this. Okay. So the first question was, how much time to practice? Like every day, right? So as I said, give yourself short goals, right? The answer was hidden in the last uh, answer to Nupuru as well. Right? Short and small goals, right? Give yourself short goals. Or small goals. So to cover short goals, you don't need to practice one hour every day, right? Giving yourself uh, something like, oh, I don't need to practice one hour every day and then only I'll get better. No, that's that's a myth, right? Practicing 20 minutes per day, every day is more than enough. Trust me on this, right? I was talking about consistency, right? I would prefer practicing 20 minutes every day than to just practice maybe two hours on on two or three days a week or just on the weekends practicing two or three days a week is not enough guys or i would say it's not the right way to practice a music instrument or or any music art form give yourself short goals 20 minutes a day or maybe 30 minutes a day is more than enough to to grow your music journey by 2x right and to improve by 2x on a daily basis but it has to be done every day Maybe six days a week, one day you can take some break or you want to, you don't feel like practicing, that's cool. But you need to have enough inspiration and motivation to take out 20 minutes in a day, right? I don't think so. It's 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 a very big t- 
time or a long, long time, right? What happens most teachers, most trainers or uh, most people say, oh, you need to give at least one hour or two hours every day to become a good musician. I don't think that I have, I probably do 30 minutes, 40 minutes every day, but the 20, 30 minutes is very effective. I'll be practicing just one task every day for a week and just get better, better at it. Right. So uh, 20 minutes a day, that's it. You don't need more time to become a good musician or to improve, right? As I said, consistent practice. And why I say every day is because we are dealing with muscle memory, right? If you if you ask any basketball player or, or even Sachin Tendulkar or anyone, they are practicing the same movement, the same shot at least 100 times a day, putting the basketball in the hoop 100, 100 times in a day, right? Why do they do that? It's because they're training their muscles, right? It's all about muscle memory that... After a point of time, after a week or so, you need to be automatic with your movements. You don't need to struggle, oh, what am I doing or what am I not doing, right? So it's about gaining freedom, right, from, from your muscles or from your physical body. And that can only be done by consistent practice where your fingers will start, mo start moving or your vocal cord will start moving on its own. You don't have to think a lot, right? So that's one thing. Next question. Okay. When we practice... Yeah, I get a lot of questions that we don't have enough time or we are working or we are busy with other classes from students. So I feel one, a, a very good time to practice is just before going to bed. What This is what something I do every day is I keep my instruments or my guitar, at least one of the guitar, I own like two, three guitars. So at least one of my guitar is kept near my bed always. So whenever I'm going to bed, I see my guitar and, and I get inspired. Okay, I need to practice today before sleeping. Well, right. So before going to bed, uh, practice 20 minutes. Yeah. And, and what you can do is basically maybe watch 20 minutes of less television. Right. I know everyone wants to relax, but I think so. There's nothing better than music to relax. Right. And focusing on 20 minutes on the skill. This is one period of time where I feel is very good. Uh, for students, I would say just after school. Just after school, right? Once you go, come home, you reach home. After your school, just pick up your instrument and practice for 20 minutes, right? Straight away. Be focused during this point of time and just practice. Don't leave it. Or I could say morning before work or before school. This could be a little tough for a few people, but I, I think this is probably one of the most effective ways where you're practicing or scheduling a practice the first thing in the morning, right? Uh, the idea is to is to do the toughest task in, in the morning, right? To finish the to finish the toughest task or to do the to the first task in the morning, which is practice, right? Once you're done with practice, then you don't have any baggage on yourself. Of learning an instrument or, or, or thinking about uh, I didn't practice this much over here. So this is the first thing what you can do. It's a very effective way. It's a little tough, but it gives you great results if you practice in the morning before school or work. Because once you get done with the toughest task of your day, you are more confident as a person as well. Uh, and you're happy throughout the day that you completed your practice session, right? So um, Three times where I feel you can practice is just after school or work before going to bed is I think so that's the easiest one where when you're whenever you're feeling sleepy just take out 20 minutes practice your one thing or two things what you're focusing on and then go off to sleep and I, and I think you'll have a great sleep as well if you if you do your music practice. Yes guys I would want to I would want you guys to ask any questions regarding this go ahead. How easy is it to learn guitar online? Okay, so I think so to learn guitar online, it's very easy. It's not much of a task. You need a good teacher. You need inspiration, motivation to learn music and you need an instrument. That's it. Apart from that, 20 minutes a day, right? So it's a 50-50 job. You need a good teacher, but you need a good, you need to be a good student as well to learn music or any kind of art form, right? So keep that in mind. If you give 20 minutes a day, it's very easy to learn guitar online. I've been teaching hundreds of two hundreds of students in this five years. And it's it's not big deal that it's 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 not much of a deal that learning music online 
and i think so with the covid and everything uh, sparda is busting this myth that music cannot be learned online i strongly believe that music can be learned online as well you just need 20 minutes you just need to devote 20 minutes of your day to music practice or to or to guitar learning okay next question can i learn at least one song properly on guitar in 3 4 months it would be a great motivation right so i think for beginners you can learn one song in one month if you give 20 minutes a day it's very easy to cover one song in a month so i in sparda you'll have classes one class a week or maybe two classes in a week so that's four sessions and around 60 minutes of classes every every session right i strongly believe it's very easy for good students will be able to do it in two classes or maybe in 15 days of time as well to learn song properly but if you give 20 minutes of of your time to learning just one song right as i said just keep your focus on learning one song a week or a month and practice it for four weeks right by the end of 30 days you'll probably be mastered completed with at least 80 to 90% of the song uh for intermediate and advanced levels i still think one month is enough <laughs> to learn learn any song one month i would say people do it in less than 15 days as, as well uh people have completed songs in one class as well i know few of my students and a lot of students in sparda they complete a few songs in maybe in in a single class itself just one instruction from the teacher for your sheets a few notes and next time when they are appearing for their next class they are done with the song so uh as i said a month is enough for any average learner as well to learn any kind of song okay any other questions from any students any regarding practice or anything anyone anyone is raising their hand okay no i don't see anyone as of now okay so let's move ahead with our presentation right so we did answer the question how much time to practice 20 minutes a day and when to practice i gave you three slots when everyone can practice and i hope that satisfies your answer as well and that helps you to create a plan for yourself as well quick tricks and tips okay so research demonstrates that practice is more effective when musicians engage in metacognition by metacognition we mean is reflecting upon their own thought process and practice routine so music you can accelerate your music learning not just by practicing every day or on your instrument or singing every day maybe just thinking about what did you do today what did you learn in class maybe write a short note after every class of what did the teacher teach you what exercises were covered what are the benefits of these exercises so reflection on what practice you are doing every day is a great way to speed up your process as well employ a mental practice in combination with physical practice right so it's very easy for musician to go to do a physical practice but i think mental practice is very important for anyone maybe you're just singing the song in your head for a for a guitar player for a drummer for a tabla player for a violin just try to recite the song by vocally i think it's a very great way of doing it where you're just trying to maybe read sheet as well and just trying to prepare oh at this point of point of time i need to do it i need to do some kind of technique or i need to play it. three notes together i need to play eight notes i need to play 16 notes right so having a mental chart is very important singing your tunes throughout the day or even before practicing is a great way of doing it you don't need the instrument all the time with you listening to songs listening to your homework right maybe your teacher gave you one song to practice in this week listening to it every day and trying and imagining yourself playing that song is very important right so mental practice also involves visualization right visualizing yourself doing that song perfectly well and how would you be how your fingers are moving throughout the song or what kind of beats you are playing in that song it could be anything you need to visualize yourself and and also 
tell yourself okay at this part of the song my hands need my fingers need to go in this particular way or my hands need to go in this particular way approach practice in an organized goal oriented manner we talked about it right it's very important for you to set master goals right that what do you need to do in 6 months what do you need to do in 3 months what do you need to do what do you need to do in 1 month and what do you require to practice every day to to achieve your short goal of one week or one month right have a goal oriented approach i would suggest that give yourself one week goals every week just have one goal and one practice routine one task list for every week and just do it for 10 15 20 minutes every day by the end of the week you're probably done with it and and you would have mastered that particular homework or practice what you have given uh if i want to talk about goal oriented manner teachers in sparda give you homeworks for every class right so you don't also need to give yourself any goals right your teachers are already doing it for you just practice whatever your teachers are teaching you right or are giving you right just one exercise or two exercises and and do it in a organized way right as i said by organized i would say have your practice sessions lined up correctly right study and analyze scores maybe just read about the music you have been learning it could be a set of notes what you are reading every day and 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 trying to interpret what's going to happen in the music right plan relatively short and regular practice sessions this i already talked about right that you need to plan short and regular practice sessions that's the key towards accelerating your music growth or music learning by 2x they are not long sessions even i don't practice for 2 hours in one go i probably do like 45 minutes <laughs> in one go and then maybe i take a break for 5 minutes i'll probably listen to some good song um and then come back and start my practice again right so plan relatively short and regular practice sessions and listen to appropriate musical examples including music professional recordings and or your teachers demonstration so it's very important for a student to keep your ears open that can only happen by listening so listen to really good music right uh, it's very important to have to have open ears when you're doing music because music is first learned by opening your ears right rather than by practicing or just doing physical practice right so always be very attentive to what you're doing in class right probably you if you're very attentive in class and listening to what your teacher is saying right and following their demonstration asking your doubts 50% of the job will be done in the sessions itself right and you really don't need to worry about a lot of things and to keep yourself motivated as i said just practicing is not important if you want to keep the way to keep your yourself inspired is to maybe take inspiration from your teachers your trainers and also listen to some great music right all the time every day just make it a habit of listening to some good music so that you're always motivated and inspired inspired to learn music right and also visualize yourself playing that kind of music right so we are at the we are at the end of, end, of, end of the session i would want you guys to ask any kind of doubts you have or any kind of anything i would in any way i can help you guys any kind of questions anything it could be anything it does not need to be your practice it's the open open ended question okay so uh, i think so we are at the end of the question we would want to uh, we would want you guys to keep a look out for such events on sparda as well on the event section okay so this is regarding my daughter she is 12 year old and she learns two categories or stay focus on one okay so uh, it depends i think so for kids it's it's good that they are probably first taking care of one category uh, in the start but if they are learning vocals and an instrument that's great because i think uh, everyone should be having some kind of vocal training because this our vocal cords or our throat is the most primitive instrument you will find right you don't need any instrument to play your vocals will do everything for you uh but i would suppose uh, to not burden the kid maybe with a lot of uh, sessions or uh, multiple instruments but if your student if your child is interested if they are able to take care and manage their time as i said even if your student is doing two 
categories uh the most they have to give is 40 minutes at every day 20 minutes for category 1 20 minutes for category 2 and they are done but personally i would want them to focus on one category for at least a year or year and a half 18 months and then move on to a new category or add a new category okay so i hope i answered that is it important to learn staff notations uh, I think so. Uh, if you want to do, uh, if you want to advance your level of playing, and this is after two three years, it's a, it's 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 recommended that you do staff notations, but it's not necessary. For me, I never learned staff notations for first five six years of my music playing. I started learning very late, but it helped me a lot. So staff notations is not a necessary thing to learn music. You can learn music without staff notations as well. It's a very personal choice. If you feel like learning it, you can go ahead. But if you don't like it, it's fine. You can still do music. Music does not require any kind of reading, right? It just requires ears and your fingers to play music. Okay, piano and Western vocal. Uh, I think so. That's a great category. Uh, vocals will also help her to with the ear training and everything. But it, as I said, it depends on the student. If, if your student is able to manage both the categories, that's great. I don't see any issues. Uh, but if you feel if your student is getting a little burden, your child is a little getting burden, you can maybe drop one of them and just focus on one thing and, and ask your student to be good at that particular thing. Okay, so I have I have answered two questions. Uh, anything else? Okay, guys. So uh, we'll end the session, uh, and I would want every one of you to keep. To look out at the event section of the Sparda School of Music, we'll be having more workshops like these. We'll be focusing on instruments as well in the coming weeks. Please look out for this, the events section in Sparda School of Music. We are going to have some wonderful workshops in the next few weeks as well. And I hope we find more participation and more students and kids are coming so that it benefits their music journey and we can help them in other ways, just not apart from sessions as well. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. I'm ending the meeting and I hope all of you guys give yourself short goals. Uh, just practice one thing every day for 20 minutes and keep listening to good music. And that's all you need to become a good musician or a good player as well. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot.